Welcome to today's session. Recently, the Supreme Court had passed eviction orders to remove certain forest dwelling scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers from their traditional habitats. The Supreme Court asked the governments of 17 states to evict an estimated 11 lakh tribals and others living in the forest after their claims of right to live in the forest were rejected under the Forest Rights Act. The court has directed the Dehradun based Forest Survey of India to submit a satellite image based report on the encroachments removed. So let's look at the matter in detail. Let's get started. So let's quickly understand the issue. Here the Supreme Court has asked the states to evict certain scheduled tribes who live in the forest and OTFDs. OTFDs stand for other traditional forest dwellers. See, they are traditionally forest dwelling people. They live in the forest, but they are not scheduled tribes. Okay, such people are called as OTFDs and scheduled tribes you know, uh, but these people have to be traditionally forest dwelling. There are certain tribes which are not traditional forest dwellers, but here we are talking about those tribes which are traditionally forest dwelling tribes. So such people, traditionally dwelling scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers in certain places, in certain states have been asked to vacate the forest and go away. And otherwise, they, if they refuse to leave that area, the state governments have been asked to evict them all right, by the Supreme Court. Now, why has the Supreme Court done so? Because these people's rights, no, these traditionally forest dwelling scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers, their rights, their claims have been rejected under the Forest Rights Act. Now, we'll look at this act in detail in the coming slides. The numbers of these people, the STs and OTFDs, are greater, are estimated to be greater than 11 lakh people. They are 11 lakh in number. And the SC has directed the Forest Survey of India to submit satellite imagery as proof after the eviction. See, we have said that the claims of these people, STs and OTFDs, have been rejected under the Forest Rights Act, right? So the rejection is based on various grounds and one of the grounds is absence of proof. All right. The scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers, Recognition of Rights Act 2006, it is more popularly known as the FRA or the Forest Rights Act. The act got passed in December 2006 during the UPA 1 regime. It recognized the traditional forest dwellers rights over land and community forest resources. See before this act came into force, these rights rights of the forest dwellers over land and community forest resources were not officially recognized but after this act they have been recognized it empowers the gram sabha see this is very important earlier this power was with the state government but now it has been decentralized and it empowers the gram sabha as a statutory authority for determining rights making claims verification of claims as well as management of forests see it provides that no tribals and forest dwellers can be evicted from forest land as their rights are recognized and vested. See, they, you cannot ask them to just leave the forest, just like that. There has to be a procedure and it has to be followed. Under the FRA, only then can they be evicted. All right. Under the FRA, certain rights are given to the STs and OFTDs, which are title rights, use rights, relief and development rights, forest management rights. Under the title rights, ownership of a land has to be given to the tribals or forest dwellers, but there is a maximum limit of 4 hectares which is being farmed, okay? And the ownership of the land is actually given to the family that is cultivating and only the family and it cannot ask for newer lands as grants, alright? That is what title rights mean and use rights. They have used rights to minor forest produce, to grazing areas, pastoralist routes, etc. Relief and developmental rights. That means in case of illegal eviction or forced displacement, they have rights to basic amenities and subject to certain restrictions like forest protection. And forest management rights means the right to protect forests and wildlife. See, the FRA mentioned certain eligibility criteria which has to be fulfilled in order to claim under the FRA, alright? And the eligibility to get rights is that the act is confined only to those who primarily reside in forest, traditional forest dwellers. Let it be STs or OFTDs, they have to be traditionally forest dwelling. 
and they have to depend on forest and forest land for a livelihood. Further, either the claimant must be a member of the scheduled tribes, scheduled in that area or must have been residing in the forest for 75 years. See, it has to be scheduled tribe and it has to be a dependent tribe on forest, okay, a traditionally forest dwelling scheduled tribe or it must have stayed in that forest or the earlier generations of those people must have stayed in the forest for at least 75 years for OTFDs, other traditional forest dwellers. These people must have stayed in the forest for 75 years or at least 3 generations each comprising of 25 years. Now let us look at the process of recognition of the rights under the FRA. Like we already mentioned, Gram Sabha is the statutory body and it looks at the initial resolution. And if there are any problems, the issue is forwarded to subdivisional or district level committees, screening committees, which are made up of forest revenue and tribal welfare departments officials. Now let us look at the criticism of the act. The Forest Rights Act has been criticized by both wildlife activists and those fighting for the rights of the tribal people and forest dwellers. The wildlife activists believe that giving people rights to live in the forest will eventually harm the forest themselves and also the wildlife. But whereas the people fighting for the rights of the tribal people and forest dwellers believe that the implementation of the law is far from perfect and the deficiencies in this have resulted in many valid claims being rejected by the states. So with this we have come to the end of today's session. Here we have mentioned a few model questions, please answer them. See you in the next session. Thank you.